Good morning and welcome to church this morning. So good to have you joining me either on your TV, your laptop, wherever you are. It's good to have you here this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And hopefully we can all be in these pews very soon together worshiping again. The call to worship this morning is on page 541 of the hymnal. If you have a hymnal at home, you're welcome to join me. Draw compassion from us. Creator God, draw compassion from us. Christ, draw compassion from us. Spirit God, draw compassion from us. Amen. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them. 
and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Well, good morning. It's good to be here this morning. I brought some people, some people, not people, but some animals with me. I brought some sheep, and you guys ha probably have a sheep like this. I hope you do. I wish we could be together, but uh, uh, because of this virus, we can't. Now, today's scripture talks about the shepherd, a sheep, and a gate. Well, I brought these guys with me today because they're my little sheep, and I named this one Rainbow. Can you guess why? I bet you can. And I named this one Pinky. Can you guess why? I think you can. Well, do you name your stuffed animals? I know some of you do because I've heard names from some of you. But I always have since I was a little girl. Now I have a dog and her name is Brinny. And we have a fenced in yard so that Brinny can ru run around in the backyard safely. The only way she can get to the front yard is if I open the gate for her and call her name to come in. Now in today's story, Jesus is talking to the people surrounding him. As Jesus sometimes does, he tells a story to get his point across. And this story is about a shepherd, his sheep, and a gate. Now, who do you think the shepherd is? If you said Jesus, I believe you're right. And who do you think the sheep are? Yes, the sheep are us, the people. And Jesus is telling us that he knows who we are, and he is calling us by name to follow him. We are to follow the shepherd, Jesus, wherever he leads us. Well, during this time when we're separate and, and with social distancing, it's sometimes easy to become complacent. It's easy to sit in front of the TV or play on our cell phones for hours or, you know, the laptop for hours. But even now, Jesus is inviting us to follow him and trust in where he is leading us. Well, maybe we could make cookies for a neighbor. And maybe we could put a smile on, the fa on our faces and as people walk by our houses like I'm sure they are doing, we could wave and smile. We could say hello. We can do this because Jesus is leading us through all of this. So let's pray together. God, thank you for the good shepherd, Jesus who can lead us through all the hard times. Amen. Hello, community Christian children and adults alike. We've got a kid's song that I'm sure everybody knows, and it's called, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. Very appropriate for this time, I think. He's got the whole In his hands he's got you and me and brother In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands He's got the whole world In his hands he's got the whole wide world In his hands he's got the whole world In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands He's got the nurses and the doctors in his hands, he's got the nurses and the doctors. In his hands, he's got the nurses and the doctors. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got community Christian. In his hands, he's got community Christian. In his hands, he's got community Christian. 
Well, good morning. This morning, our prayers will be at the prayer wall. During Lent, we were collecting your prayer requests. During Holy Week, this prayer wall was outside of the church, and we had people come and add their prayers, add what was on their hearts. And for all of Eastertide, which is 50 days from the start of Easter until Pentecost, this is what we consider the Easter season, and these prayers remain in our sanctuary. So I'm saying our prayer this morning at the prayer wall. This prayer wall will be a place where your prayers are held until May 31st on Pentecost when we enter a new season of the church. But this morning on what would have been our hunger walk morning, I'm going to say our prayers at the prayer wall and know that all of the prayers that you have both physically and virtually sent to us are here and we are praying with you. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? God, on this first Sunday of May, when typically for the last several years we have walked to raise awareness about hunger, we lift up all those who are hungry in our community. We know that one in six people in Stark County is food insecure, and we know that in this time when money is short, when systems are still shut down, that that number has likely increased. For the children who regularly received free lunch, free snacks, many even received free breakfast at school and who who no longer have those resources, we lift them up to you. For those who were used to buying food with their regular paycheck but have since been laid off or furloughed or still trying to get into the unemployment office, trying to get through on the phone in order to receive unemployment, God, we lift them up to you. For those who don't have the ability to go to the grocery store, maybe because it's too dangerous for their health, or maybe because they don't have the money or the resources or the transportation to get there, oh God, we lift them up to you. This morning, we lift up all the prayers on this prayer wall, especially for those who are hungry, not only for food, but those who hunger for relationships and community again. Those who hunger for the ability to work or to worship or to gather again. For those who hunger for connection or for things to return to normal or for headlines that don't include talk of a virus, God, we lift up all who hunger this morning. For all the ways that we are hungering, for what's been lost, for what's been put on hold, for what we do not have. God, this morning we remember that the numbers of those who are hungry has grown those who are food insecure, who are underemployed or unemployed, and those who hunger for things beyond food. For all of this and more, for the unspoken prayer requests, for all of the prayer requests that have been added to this wall with courage and with hope, we lift them up to you, the God of the whole universe. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen.
with me now the scripture for today from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Clopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place on these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death. Besides all of this, it's now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us and went into the tomb found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So we went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. They told him what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is the first Sunday in May, and we should be gathered here together. This morning in the worship service, we should have been blessing your tennis shoes and preparing for our hunger walk. On this first Sunday in May, traditionally, for the last several years, We've been gathering together to walk two miles to raise awareness for hunger in Stark County. Traditionally, we gather right here with our dogs and our strollers and balloons and a face painting stand for our children set up right here and a DJ behind me, a red ribbon between these two posts, a cutting ceremony with the mayor, a prayer, and a chance to walk up Main Street one mile to Apple Grove and back down carrying signs and balloons, walking our dogs all together with our ecumenical partners to raise awareness about hunger in Stark County. This traditionally would have been our Hunger Walk Sunday. And instead I'm here alone with my dog Moses. He's never missed one. We're here alone on the steps. There's no soup brewing in the community room. There's no two mile walk planned. There's no gathering together of non-perishable food items to donate. In years past, we've had thousands of pounds of food donated. We've raised up to $15,000 in one day for the Stark County Food Bank. And today we're here alone. But it doesn't mean that hunger is not still a problem. Even though we're not walking together that two miles, we know that one in six people in Stark County are hungry. And I'm sure like me, you begin to picture in your mind what hunger looks like in Stark County. You have an image of what a hungry person might be. After I started researching what hunger actually looks like in Stark County, I was surprised by the statistics. One in 10 senior citizens, grandparents, grandmothers, and grandfathers is hungry. 68% of people in Stark County who are food insecure have high school diplomas, and 20% have college degrees or more. One in four children in our community is food insecure. These are the faces of families who are deciding between paying an electrical bill or buying enough groceries. They're deciding between paying rent or having enough to eat. 
These are families just like us who have had bad luck or difficult employment history and don't have enough to eat. These are the families that we support in the Hunger Walk. And yet here I am alone. One thing I love about the Hunger Walk Day when we do it is that we see people of all generations coming out. We see people from all traditions gathering together. We walk up and down Apple Grove and then we walk into this very room and we break bread together. Delicious soup, hummus made by our Muslim brothers and sisters. The Boy Scouts and the Mormon community putting out tables and then putting them away for us, vacuuming our community room. We see our whole community coming together all because we can agree that it's through the breaking of bread that we show love, that we are the body of Christ together. Our scripture reading today is a famous scripture about the walk to Emmaus. Just like we were planning to walk two miles today, there were the disciples walking seven miles from Jerusalem back home. This was a difficult walk for them. Their Lord, their teacher, their savior had been killed. They felt that their mission had been destroyed. They felt that all that they had been working for, all that kept them whole and united and hopeful was gone. Their hearts were heavy. We know that as the disciples were walking on this road to Emmaus, their hearts were heavy. They felt burdened. They felt alone. And in this story, even Christ himself comes up next to them and begins to speak to them, but they do not recognize him. Christ himself comes up and begins to talk to his disciples about what they have learned and what they have seen and what they are experiencing. But they do not recognize him. Their hearts were heavy. But after their walk of those seven miles, just like we plan to go and have soup, they go into their homes to break bread and they invite him in. And it is there at the table when he blesses bread and breaks it and gives it to them, that they understand they are in the presence of Christ. It's not through the walk. It's not through the group of them hitting the road. It's in the breaking of bread. It's in the mission of food. It's in the feeding of one another that Christ is recognized and known and understood. Right there when he lifts up the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to them, they're brought right back to the Lord's Supper. They're brought right back to the upper room. They remember the meal they shared with him. They understand Christ through bread alone. It's then that they tell their friends and all who will listen that they have seen the risen Lord. And it's because of this, it's because of Christ showing up in the breaking of bread, in the feeding of neighbors, in the sharing of a meal, in the ability for those who are hungry to be fed, it is there that we know Christ that we see Christ, that we experience Christ, and that we become Christ's hands and feet in the world. It's not through the walk. Even though I'm here alone with Moses, and we won't be doing our hunger walk this Sunday, even though we are all sheltering in place apart from one another, it doesn't mean that we still can't be Christ in the world. We are still collecting food outside door number three. We are still committed to our mission of being known to the world through Christ's love of feeding and breaking bread for those who need it. We are still doing the mission of God, even if we're not gathering in large groups for big pots of soup and a big walk on Main Street. We are still filling the mission of God, feeding one another, caring for one another, being Christ's hands and feet. We are still collecting food donations. We are still blessing you from afar to do what you can to be seen and known as Christ's ambassador in the world. And so on this Hunger Walk Sunday, may you remember what happened on that road to Emmaus. Christ wasn't known in the crowd when they were walking. Christ wasn't known to them in the speaking of words and scriptures and telling of prophecies. Christ was known through one act and one act alone, in the breaking of bread, in the feeding of those who were hungry, in the sharing of a meal, in the abundance that can come by seeing a need in a community and making sure it's met. And so on this Sunday, I invite you to look in your pantries, to look at your budget, to see what you can offer still, what you can drop off at the church, what you can drop off at your local shelter, what you can drop off 
for the one in six people in our community that's hungry, for the one in four children that doesn't have enough to eat, for the one in 10 grandmas and grandpas who don't have enough food in their pantry, and for the increasing number of people who are hungry in our community in this difficult time. This is a call to mission. It's a call to generosity. It's a call to meet the need of hunger in our community, to be Christ in the world by the breaking of bread, by the sharing of food, by the generosity given to all who hunger. May you remember that the church is bigger than the building. The mission field is bigger than these front doors and that our call to serve is bigger than what we do on Sunday mornings in church. So join me and Moses in sharing and celebrating on this Hunger Walk Sunday. From your own homes, give generously to those who need. Be Christ in the world. Be known as God among us. Amen. Good morning. This is Amanda Schaefer serving as elder this Sunday morning, May 3rd. I want to let you all know that I miss you. I miss being at our church. I miss playing bells in the bell choir. I miss serving as elder in the church. But during this time apart, it's important for us to remember that we can need to continue to pledge if possible. Although we're not there, the church still is. It needs cared for and its bills need paid. Also, our wonderful staff that we're so blessed to have is continues to be hard at work ministering to all of us. So if you can at all, please continue to pledge. It's now easy for us. We can mail in a check, we can drop off a check, we can Venmo or we can PayPal. Those options can be found on our Facebook or website. And please reach out if you need any help with any of these options. Now, if we could all take a moment to join in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for blessing us with all that you've given. Please help us to find it in our hearts to continue to give to the church. Also, God, please keep us all healthy, safe, and positive. And please let the time come soon that we can gather together again. In your name we pray, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I'm Dave Owens, and today, May 3rd, is my birthday. I wish I could be with all of you today in person and physically, but I take solace in knowing that we are together spiritually, if not in person. As we pre prepare to participate in communion, will you pray with me? Lord, we are so thankful for our church and all the gifts in our lives. As we prepare to take this bread, we give thanks for the bread of life and are reminded of our connection with your Son and the example you have set for us. As we drink from this cup, we are reminded of Christ's spilled blood for all of us. We are in a time of need and draw closer to you knowing that with you, we are equipped to handle anything that comes our way. Thank you for always being there for us and loving us. Amen. On the night before he died, Jesus took a loaf of bread. Giving thanks, he blessed it and broke it and offered it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Taking a cup, again he gave thanks, blessed it and shared the cup with his disciples and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink from this, all of you. This is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Bountiful God, we give thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Would you join us in singing the prayer our Lord taught us? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
where you can bring your food donations, but honestly, I hope that we overflow this, that we fill this foyer with food that's needed. Come by and offer your donations to our community that is so desperately in need, and now receive this blessing. May the God who created you in the image of goodness, the Holy Spirit who breathes into you the breath of life, and Christ who went ahead of us all, teaching us that we are known most when we feed our neighbors through the love of Christ, send you out of this place and into the world with peace. Amen. Thank you.